So I'm going to turn oh. things over to uh, Dan Marsh. Great. Well, thank, thank, you. thank you very much, Bob. And um, and certainly uh, kudos to you and your staff for putting on a, a very informative and uh, given the circumstances, uh, uh, I know it's not been an easy uh, uh, task to put together a, a conference online. But right now, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, the Honorable Tom Reed, who represents the 23rd District of New York. Um, Congressman Reed has been the lead Republican on the bipartisan New Markets Tax Credit Extension Act since 2017. Before going to Washington, um, uh, as a member of the uh, 111th Congress in 2010, Congressman Reed served several terms as mayor of the city of Corning, New York, a city where he was raised and still lives. Um, and he lives there with his wife, Jean, and their two children, Autumn and Will. And the Reed family's roots are very deep in New York's southern tier. Um, it's a manufacturing and farming region. And because of his connection to his district, uh, he truly understands the needs of all Americans who have been disproportionately impacted by the economic crisis caused by COVID. While serving as mayor, as mayor of his hometown, Congressman Reed learned that creating jobs, building wealth in disadvantaged communities, and repairing deteriorated infrastructure are not partisan issues. And it's that bipartisan ethic he brought to Congress. How refreshing is that? The Congressman co-chairs the Problem Solvers Caucus, a group of 24 Republicans and 24 Democrats who meet weekly to solve some of the most important legislative and policy issues facing our country today. He is also a member of the House Ways and Means Committee and serves on the Subcommittee for Tax Policy, which has jurisdiction over the New Markets Tax Credit. Congressman Reed has firsthand knowledge of how new markets work, creating jobs and strengthening local economies throughout his district, including projects in his district like the Hornell YMCA and in Ithaca, Cascade Plaza, Cuyahoga Green, and Seneca Way, which together attracted over 43 million in credit allocation and created over 600 living wage jobs. I'm honored to have this opportunity to welcome a good friend of the New Markets Tax Credit Program and an avid Buffalo Bills fan, Congressman Reed. Welcome, Congressman Reed. It took a whole team of us to figure this out. I was watching the whole introduction and I watched Bob uh, talking there, so we finally figured it out. It's COVID-19, I guess we gotta get used to this. So Dan, thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you to Bob and his team uh, for all, all that you do for the New Markets Tax Credit Coalition. You know I'm a big fan. Uh, you know, I don't uh, need a lengthy speech or a lengthy introduction uh, to show uh, our support for the New Markets Tax Credit, and we believe in it. Uh, we think it's a great tool in the toolbox for economic development uh, across the country. We have seen it firsthand uh, in regards to projects in the district, but I've also traveled the country, and I've seen it deployed in uh, things from a manufacturing facility to uh, uh, the YMCA in our district and uh, many things in between and uh, far uh, afield uh, from uh, different projects that we have seen successfully deploy and leverage the new markets tax credit. And I can't think of a better advocate and ally I have in this fight uh, than Terry Sewell, uh, who if she and I on the committee, uh, Ways and Means Committee, uh, have teamed up on this issue and she recognizes the power uh, of this policy and we want to stand together with her for years to come to make sure that new markets tax credit is not only uh, ingrained in our tax code in the United States, uh, but whenever it is threatened, whenever it is uh, potentially subject uh, to any type of tinkering, uh, that you're gonna have strong allies and ambassadors directly in the room, uh, in the Ways and Means Committee room to make sure that does not happen. And I can tell you working with Terry, uh, she is a bulldog uh, when it comes uh, to this policy. And I am committed to it just as much as she is to make sure that you, you get the right uh, appropriate uh, representation in that room to make sure that this tax credit uh, is protected and enhanced. And last year, uh, we saw the power uh, of that relationship. I think we got $1.5 billion of additional allocation uh, in regards to uh, the tax credit itself. Um, that put about $5 billion uh, worth, worth of potential economic power 
uh, into play on the front lines to uh, make sure that these projects go forward and have the resources to uh, uh, fully blossom. And especially in the time of COVID-19, I got to tell you, I think uh, it's even more important now uh, that we deploy as many levers as possible and tools in the toolbox to make sure we stand with our frontline communities and that as we get through COVID-19 and we get to a vaccine and we get to a situation where hopefully COVID-19 will soon be something of a uh, object in our rear view mirror uh, that we uh, move forward and use these tools such as the new markets tax credit to be tools in the toolbox to blossom the economy again and get people back to work and grow and get the economy humming again as we go into the next year and the next few years uh, because COVID-19 has had such a impact and not only the death and not only the public health uh, impacts that it has had on our communities but the economic impacts have been deep uh, they have been wide and that is why we need every tool such as this uh, in the toolbox to make sure that it's taken care of give you an update a little bit from the committee perspective on new market tax credit you know we have the tax extender uh, package coming together uh, as we speak um, there is discussion of potentially seeing if we can't get the uh, reform that Terry and I have been advocating for, which is the application of the tax credit for AMT purposes and things like that uh, ingrained in this policy. There's some discussion of it, um, but you know, we'll see how that unfolds because it's very fluid and dynamic as we come to the end of the year of this congressional session to see if we can get some of these substantive tweaks done. But that is one uh, that I'm still holding out hope on uh, that we could potentially uh, get taken care of in the tax uh, uh, package uh, that is coming together as we speak. Um, if not, uh, obviously the most important thing is to get this credit uh, extended and that we don't have to play with retroactivity and all those problems that come with it, as you all know, uh, dealing with the credit on a day-to-day -day basis. So uh, stay tuned as that package continues to blossom and uh, develop. We'll keep you all informed and Bob does a great job and Dan does a great job and everybody at the coalition does a great job of watching this 24-7, uh, especially in these times as we come to the end of the year. One last uh, package that we'll put on your front, the Problem Solvers Caucus, that group that was uh, recognized by Dan uh, that we're involved with and we founded four years ago. That's that bipartisan group of legislators uh, that are committed to governing, uh, that have come together as proud Republicans, proud Democrats, but at the end of the day, Americans first, and really standing together as a coalition. And we were widely recognized as a group of members uh, that got the COVID relief talks uh, going again. Uh, prior to the presidential election, got the stakeholders back in the room. But more importantly, over the last two weeks, uh, we have been credited, uh, the Problem Solvers Caucus, working with our new friends in the Senate. There's about 10 senators on both sides of the aisle that we are working with on a regular basis that have developed deep relationships. And we have been in the room on a $908 billion COVID relief package that you may have read about and you may be tracking. Uh, where Josh Gottheimer, my friend from New Jersey on the Democratic side, he and I have been in the room uh, and talking to these senators uh, with uh, uh, doing legislative text, doing finalization of the allocation of the $908 billion, and we are there. Uh, we released a section-by-section -section summary of the breakdown of that $908 billion. There's two roadblocks that fundamentally are left at state and local government funding and liability uh, reform that needs to happen as, re as a result of uh, COVID. Um, but I will tell you, we made huge progress on both of those fronts over the last five days, in particular on liability in the last 48 hours. But it is time uh, to uh, call the question. And uh, we are hoping that $908 billion package, um, now that Steven Mnuchin released a, essentially a $917 billion uh, package on behalf of the White House, and we are talking to Mitch McConnell and others, we have this uh, package ready to go. We just got some final blanks uh, to put together on the liability reform and on state and local. But I'll tell you, once that green light is given, uh, that is relief that is much needed in regards to getting it uh, out to the communities, out to the American people, and out to American businesses uh, that are suffering as the lifelines of the original three and a half COVID bills come to an end. So we're, we're there, and I just wanted to tell you, um, thank you for all the support you have given our office. Thank you for doing what you do, and just know that we are with you uh, in these fights uh, as we go forward to protect uh, this great tax policy that has been working so well, I think, since, uh, I mean, my goodness, Bob, it's already 20, 20 years, I think, it's been on the books. So I can't believe that. That's crazy. 
Arian was only like, you know, not even born yet, I think, at that point in time. So anyway, uh, thanks so much for having me, and I look forward to the questions. But most importantly, thank you. And, and Dan, thank you for recognizing the Bills. This is our year, and just between us, I didn't say this publicly because my kids will hold me to it, but I promised my family that if the Bills go to the Super Bowl, we're all going this year, regardless of COVID, regardless of anything else. We're going to Tampa to watch the Bills win the Super Bowl. You know it's COVID-19 when the Buffalo Bills win the Super Bowl, baby. <laughs> They're having a great year. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Um, Congressman, I just want to say thank you very much for everything. And I want to compliment you on the COVID package because that thing looked as dead as a doornail. And really, you guys did it. So congratulations. And thanks for, for all your help with the clip. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you, Bob, for recognizing that. And as we go into the next Congress, keep an eye on the Problem Stoppers Caucus, because with a five-seat, essentially, uh, majority that the Democrats hold, the group, we're, we're going to reconstitute about 52, 54 members, equally divided on both sides. And as you, as you know, if you can hold a group of 52 to 54 members together, which we can, we have four years of this relationship that we've created, all you need is a handful of members to stand strong. We can block legislation, we can get on legislation, and we will influence the agenda like never before. So we're excited about what our role is going to be in the next Congress. And Problem Solvers Caucus is going to be a, a force to reckon with. And we're here to govern. We're not here to blow the place up. That's great. That's great. That's great. Good. Well, I, I only have uh, comments. Um, and they sum up to thank you very much uh, for your leadership on the Problem Solvers Caucus and for your leadership on the New Markets Tax Credit Bill. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate it. All right, next time, COVID-19 is going to be a thing in the past. We will do this live again, I think. Uh, I think we all can agree. Let's get together. Let's see each other in person and uh, be safe till we, as we land this plane on a vaccine and getting COVID-19 into the history books. Thank you, Congressman. Thanks for everything. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.